Hey, what's up guys? This is An from Blackwater Products. And this video is going to be about culturing paramecium and what to do when your paramecium culture crash. The reason I'm making this video is because I have a couple of people who DM me asking me that they have some issues maintaining their culture. So I hope that this video, it's not going to be a super long video, but I hope that this video will resolve some of those issues that you guys have been having. So let's get started. For those of you who don't know what paramecium are, they are a large single cell organism that are part of what many people call infusoria. Paramecium are actually large enough for you to see with your naked eye. They exist as tiny white dust floating in the water column. They are an excellent source of food for newly hatched beta fries, mainly because many of them struggle to eat baby brine shrimp as soon as they hatch. This is why I encourage everybody who breeds betas in this blending complex and also the cocina complex to culture their own paramecium to ensure a high fry survival rate. All right, so let's get started on creating a culture. Let me turn off the aperture on the camera just a little bit so you can see a little clearer. All right, so what I have here is the paramecium culture. It's an old culture that I got from, let me show you what it looks like once so I've done got from this bottle. See, this is my current paramecium culture. And I'm going to re-culture it in these two bottles. You don't have to use water bottles, but I like to use water bottles because it's super convenient to just pour in and pour out and then change the water you want to. You, you can use like a glass jar or anything that you want. Um, but the water bottle is super convenient. You also don't want to have like too large of a culture then it just becomes a hassle. So have multiple cultures, good, because in case one crash, you always have a paramecium source on another culture. And the second thing you're gonna need is veg ve vegetable matters, right? So I have here a piece of broccoli. See my camera in focus on it. And a piece of carrot. And one of the mistakes that I see a lot of people do is that they use too much vegetable matter. You don't need that much. So for like, a culture about this size, I use about that size. It's super tiny, it's not big at all. Okay, because you can always add more, but you can't take out. It becomes very difficult. So don't use too much. And the kind of material you use, the food source you use for the paramecium actually does matter and affects the rate of uh, proliferation inside a culture. So for example, I find that broccoli proliferate paramecium super quick but it also crashes the paramecium super quick too because it breaks down super fast so the material that the faster the material breaks down the faster the paramecium will proliferate but the faster your culture will crash so keep that in mind and I think one of the reasons why broccoli proliferates so fast is because they have a high surface area you see this like just a bunch of little flower buds on it and something like carrot, it's gonna, it's gonna be a lot slower because the, um, the surface area is a lot less compared to the mass. So you don't have to use carrots or broccoli. You can use any kind of vegetable matter. You can use lettuce if you want to. A lot of people use lettuce. Um, I like to use these. Potato works great too. And sometimes I even use rice and oats. But keep in mind that rice being so hard and breaks down so slowly is gonna proliferate your culture a lot slower. So if you want something that lasts a lot longer, you might want to use like grain. But you want something that's quick, then you use vegetable matter. For me, I changed out the water in my culture about once every three weeks, so I don't mind using pieces of vegetables, but that is up to you. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna need is a water source for your paramecium culture. I prefer to use either bottled water or oral water. Do not use tap water because it has chlorine and the chlorine will kill the paramecium. So don't use tap water, use bottled water or oral water if you have it. Try to, try to get the freshest source of water. You can use fish tank water. The problem I have with that is because a lot of fish tanks have other microorganisms that might eat the paramecium and so you might not be culturing just paramecium, maybe coaching a lot of other crap too. So I just want to coach a paramecium. So I use tap water, I mean, I'm sorry, not tap water. I'm using um, 
bottled water, or in this case, I'm using our water. So make sure you have a clean source of water. All right, so what I do is I have this paramecium culture from one of my old culture, and I'm gonna what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna pour the water into the culture before I pour it into the bottle. All right. So you notice that I don't need a lot of culture compared to water. So you want to use as much water as possible. I'm going to fill up the water bottle about halfway. So this is about as much as I use. And then from there on I just drop a piece of broccoli. And this culture will proliferate after about a week. You're gonna have a lot of paramecium. You're gonna see us tiny little white dots, little white clouds that swim around in the water. All right, so how do you know if your culture is working properly? So I have two culture here that I had for two weeks, it's about two weeks old. And as you can see, the decomposition has already started. So what's happening is there's bacteria and fungus and other microorganism that are breaking down the vegetable matter inside the water bottle. And the paramecium is actually eating those bacteria and reproducing themselves. So the paramecium itself are not actually eating the plant material, but they're eating the microorganism, microorganism that's breaking down the plant material. So what, what you're gonna have to notice is that the smell, the smell of the water from the uh, culture is going to be a little swampy. It's going to be like, it's going to smell like a, a swamp, like almost like sewage, but not as bad. So if you have that smell, don't freak out. It's actually working properly. Now, what you actually don't want is the smell of fermentation. If you have any kind of sour or like acidic or alcoholic smell, that means you use too much plant material and the plant material is actually being fermented inside a water bottle. And that's gonna kill your culture. So you don't want that. So if you have that, start over. Now the great thing about paramecium is, even if the culture crash, chances are you can bring it back to life. Even if you don't see the paramecium, the little white dots that's swimming in the water. So for example, if I take this and I shine the light on the side, and I look down from the top of the bottle, I can see little tiny white dots. And I know that th those are paramecium, right? And if your culture crash, you might not see those white dots anymore, but you can still bring it back to life. It's not like Moena or Daphnia culture, in, in which case if they crash, you might lose everything. But with paramecium, you can bring it back to life super easy. So I had a couple people DM me asking me that they want to buy more. And I told them, you know, they don't have to purchase more. They can just go ahead and recultivate them and chances are they'll come back to life. It's something that you can have for a very, very long time and it's very, very forgiving. So you can see this water bottle, it's getting a little dirty. And at this point, I probably need to do a water change or you know, change out the water. So I'm gonna show you what I do and then you guys can uh, follow the instruction. Okay, so what I do is I take a very fine brine shrimp net. This is just a fish net, but it's super, super fine. See that? And the reason why I want it to be super fine is because I want it to catch all the older plant particulates inside the water. And I don't want to reuse those. So I want to get rid of those. And I just want to strain out the paramecium and maybe the carrots too. So this is going to help me achieve that without actually getting rid of the paramecium because the paramecium will fit through the holes. So try to find the finest net you can and just simply pour the water through. So if you look at the net here, there's a lot of gunk and let's see if I can bring it to the camera. It's a lot of gunk and that's the piece of carrot. Uh, I, might, I might be able to reuse that, but I just want to show you guys the, the gunk that's right here. So you want to get rid of those. So what you have left is somewhat cleaner water and it's actually kind of cloudy. I want to know if the camera is able to actually pick up the paramecium that's in there, but it's in there. I can see it right now from above. 
All right, so now before you start pouring water and putting into reculturing them in a the bottle, make sure that you don't have too much of the old water. So I'm gonna actually remove half of those water and I'm gonna pour in, I'm gonna put in about one cup of fresh water. That way it doesn't go bad as, it, there's no, there's not a lot of toxic buildup. It's the, uh, you know, the ability of ammonia and other nitrates is gonna kill the paramecium. So you don't want that, you wanna get rid of it. All right guys, I hope that was informative and answered some of your questions that you guys might have. If you guys have any, any other specific questions, you guys can leave it in the comment below and I'll try to answer that in the next video. Thank you.